Hello everyone, thank you for joining me today for the webinar. Let me introduce myself shortly. My name is Dagmar Dziekan. I'm an architect and designer from the south of Poland. A few years ago, around 2014, I started running an education blog called Lamus Dworski, where I compile and translate bits of knowledge about the Polish folklore, some being connected to my design process and some being a sphere of my personal studies. The blog was initially meant to be a place for me to practice my English language and over the years it became a well-received platform where I share many curious informations I've been always interested in, the customs, the legends and many other interesting trivia connected to the simply forgotten pre-Christian traditions in my country. One of the short articles I've published describes the symbolism of the linden trees in our folklore. In short, that article is the reason why I'm here with you today. Unfortunately, I'm not able to attend the webinar live today due to the time difference and my work schedule. Therefore, you are listening to a pre-recorded presentation. If you will have some questions after hearing me out, feel free to send me a message. I will leave my email and my blog's address at the end of the presentation. Let's begin! In my presentation, I will try to show you the Polish perspective on the symbolism of the linden trees. Just like in other cultures across the globe, most of the trees native to our climate held some form of a cultural importance in our folklore. They were, we might say, believed to channel or to boost the quote-unquote female or the male energy of the nature. It had its roots in old primeval beliefs and symbolism connected to the basic ideas of the dualistic cosmology, comparable to some degree to ancient ideas or concepts like the Chinese yin yang. One interesting detail I wanted to mention here is the linguistic connection. As you most likely already know, the Polish language, as well as other Slavic languages, are among the linguistic groups that use grammatical genders, the masculine, the feminine and the neuter. In our context of the sacred trees, their name as a noun in the Polish language usually corresponds with the symbolic gender they've been assigned to centuries ago, which means the energy they boost. The general word, meaning a tree, the drzewo, is a neutral noun. What you can see on the slide are only a few examples of trees that are important in our folklore, seen as sacred in the old times. Of those symbolizing the male energy, I could mention the oak, the beech, and the sycamore. Of those symbolizing the female side of the nature, the linden, the birch, and the willow were among the most significant. Some of those trees were so extremely important that the names of the months were dedicated to them. To this day, the month of July is called Lipiec after the linden tree, Lipa. It corresponds with the cycle of its life, because in our climate the linden trees bloom usually around the turn of June and July. Other names are known from historical sources describing the archaic Polish language or dialects. For example, March was named Brzezin after Brzoza, the birch, or April was named Dębień after Dąb, the oak. Some of the sacred trees were seen as blessed and channeling only the good protective energy, while some other could be described as cursed. Because we are going to focus on the linden tree, I've chosen a few examples of the female trees to show you on this slide, with trees like the linden, hazel or birch being seen as blessed or channeling the pure energy, and trees like the willow or aspen having somewhat of a more complex meaning. The word cursed which I included on the slide appears in the folklore, however, it might be a bit too strong of a word to contain all of their meanings, because the traditions as we know them nowadays aren't that one-dimensional. It's sometimes hard to distinguish what comes from the primeval beliefs and what's been a more recent interpretation, clashing with superstitions or with Christian beliefs. I've been told that the willow tree in the cursed trees section is an interesting example because it differs a little from the symbolism you might know from the western traditions where it usually represents the growth, the balance, life and harmony above all. Let me try to describe it just shortly. In our culture, willow is most commonly called a symbol of sorrow and grief. It meant yearning and melancholy, maybe a bit like in the English name of the weeping tree. In Poland, this meaning of the willow penetrated even the high culture, for example it's a common motif in the illustrations accompanying the sorrowful music of Frédéric Chopin. In the rural traditions and legends, 
Willow was a tree attracting old spirits that were called demons or devils through the later Christian perspective. That image was particularly strong with the descriptions of a dying dry willow. Popular motifs in the Polish legends include a cunning devil appearing on a willow tree or in its hollows at midnight, or a rusałka appearing in waters underneath it. And what attracted them? Here we come closer to the primeval Slavic mythology. In the old days, willow trees had a connection with the underworld called Navia, which was a world enclosed by waters and ruled by the Slavic god Veles. The god appeared as horned, and in the folklore his persona had been reduced to a role of a devil over the centuries. Willow remained the place connecting the two worlds, a place where the spirits can appear with ease and where one could connect with them, maybe ask for divinations, but also a dangerous place for the living who would approach it at night unprepared and unprotected. What's important? The symbolism of the willow, just like of many other trees, wasn't that one-dimensional. It was also seen as enhancing fertility or representing the rebirth, thanks to its ability of a fast growth, or symbolizing the joys of music and used as material for magical practices or divinations, what again links it here to the god Veles. That is a broad topic which could require making a separate presentation just about the willow to explain it all in details. Today we will focus on the most prevalent blessed tree, the linden. Linden were among the most sacred of all trees, and probably the most sacred of those representing the female aspects of the nature. Of course, there are many small regional differences, and I've seen articles arguing whether the linden or the birch or even the willow should be interpreted as the most important female tree in the Polish folklore. In the end, it's all a matter of perspective, and the linden was undoubtedly among the most important in the Polish rural communities. It was usually paired with the oak tree that is undoubtedly the most important male energy tree. Together they form a symbiotic relationship enhancing or supplementing each other. Both are known for their longevity and could live for hundreds of years in our climate. Overwhelming majority of single trees included in nature protection programs in Poland nowadays are either oaks or linden. The linden had many meanings and uses in the Polish culture and folklore. I've divided its purposes into three groups. Linden as the witness of people's life and fate, as the passage connecting to the spiritual world, and as the common material where it was used for physical healing, which was also extremely important for the common people. Let's take a closer look at the first group of the meanings, the witness of people's life and fate. Linden was a common symbol of fertility and of motherly protection. It accompanied the people in their journey from life to death. Apart from enhancing the fertility, it was also believed to help the women during the labor. Then, it was said that cradles made from the linden wood were the best for the infants, and the linden wood ensured protection from harmful spirits. Linden were planted on private properties, very often as a tree dedicated to a daughter after her birth but also simply as a protective tree that was meant to cover the cottages or manors with its suiting shadows. People believed that living under a linden tree would bring happiness and a blissful life. Rows of linden were also planted for a similar reason along alleys leading to the property. When leaving the house, they were meant to grant you a safe journey and a safe return. One of the linden's protective traits, as believed on the countryside, was also to ward off the lightnings, another reason why it was planted close to the households. It was one of many trees that had this trait, in opposition to, for example, the willow that was said to attract the lightnings. The peaceful atmosphere created by the linden made it a good place for community gatherings. Judgments were made in its shadows, especially these which required a peaceful reconciliation. Vows were exchanged under its branches, vows of fraternity, of friendship, of marriage. These are only few of the most common examples of the linden being present throughout people's lives. 
In the next group, I've collected the most important examples of Linden's significance in the spiritual life of the people. It was probably the most important tree able to make a good connection between the world of the living and the spiritual sphere and reach the gods and saints. Similar to the fashion of planting the linden close to the houses, they appeared also on sacred land, on cemeteries and on the church plots. Linden were believed to purify the surroundings and therefore able to create or strengthen a sacred space. Planted next to a grave, it provided a peaceful rest for the souls and the coffin made from the linden wood granted a good journey to the afterlife. I could say that a peaceful afterlife was highly desired in the Slavic culture. For example, the Polish folklore and rural beliefs were filled with stories about those who met an unfortunate death or weren't buried properly and came back as vicious spirits or demons. Preventing that was crucial in the minds of the rural people in the past. Linden's ability of purifying the surroundings was used in many other ways. For example, it was planted next to the water wells. It sometimes accompanied also water springs that were believed to be holy, as it probably amplified the holy water's healing abilities. Linden wood is one of the common soft woods that had many uses in the everyday life of the people, but one of the most important uses in the context of the spiritual life is the sculpting. Rural artists loved using the linden wood for religious sculptures and it was often treated as the best material for figurines depicting the holy mother or female saints. Old linden trees were very often adorned with shrines dedicated to the holy mother. Holy figurines were put inside natural hollows in the tree or inside wooden constructions attached to the trunk. It was also the other way around. Linden trees were planted on two sides of pre-existing wayside shrines. Linden wood was extremely important also in creation of religious images and the most evident are the icons known primarily from the Eastern churches. In the areas of Poland that had or still have a dominant Eastern Orthodox or Eastern Catholic communities, linden wood was the easiest to obtain of all the types of woods seen as sacred, keep in your mind that it always depended on local geography. According to the research article I found, the linden wood was the most popular material for icons in the Carpathian area up to the 17th century. The last group is dedicated to the many uses of linden in the old rural medicine, the juices, the flowers, the bark, the phloem and so on. People try to heal themselves with the sacred tree in numerous ways. Most of the linden's properties are widely known nowadays, therefore I'm not going to dwell into much details in this section. When getting ill, the peasant's first treatment was often to drink linden juices or infusions from the flowers. Similarly to the ability of purification which I described in the previous group, linden was used to clear a person's mind and in many related healing rituals. Sometimes, even just touching the linden with prayers was believed to take at least a part of the illness out of the body. Importance of the linden tree was evident and the tree penetrated many spheres of the Polish culture. It was mentioned in poems of Jan Kochanowski, who was regarded as the greatest Slavic poet before the 19th century. He was known to have a habit of sitting under a linden tree planted next to his house, which he described a few times in his works. Among his numerous poems, he published three epigrams dedicated most likely to that particular linden. Here you can see a translation of the most well-known of his epigrams dedicated to the linden. I'm not going to read it out loud now, but I recommend you to come back to it later and embrace it in peace. If you are a person who likes reading poetry, you can try to find other works by Kochanowski. His poems are an interesting example of Slavic poetry from the Renaissance era. Linden, as well as the oaks, were sometimes planted as a commemoration of important historical events, such as victories or treaties. There aren't as many events from the Polish history we know of when these trees were planted on a mass scale, like it's known from the Czechoslovak history, but an important and quite well-documented case occurred in the 17th century during the reign of the King Jan Sobieski. 
In the year 1683, the Polish troops were expected to assist in the Battle of Vienna. Both while marching out from the Polish kingdom towards the city and coming back victorious, the troops as well as locals in the towns they passed through planted trees on behalf of the victory. These were mostly oaks representing the strength and the victory, but also many linden. They are commonly regarded to as Sobieski's trees. That event occurred quite far in the past, and we don't have a full spectrum of information about them. A few years ago, the Polish government announced a program where the trees were searched for in an attempt of creating a catalogue, and sadly, not as many as expected were confirmed to be still existing nowadays. There is a website with several confirmed trees pinpointed on the map, most of them around the region of Silesia where the Sobieski's troop marched through. It could match the many legends. According to one, the king personally initiated that event and planted a linden tree himself next to a cloister in Gliwice before departing to Vienna. Apart from the Sobieski's victory trees, people planted also the linden in appreciation of Sobieski's beloved wife, nicknamed Marysinka. The marriage was described as rare at those times because they formed a loving and understanding relationship and their fondness of each other was widely known in the kingdom. These so-called Marysinka linden weren't included in the state program collecting locations of the victory trees which I mentioned in the previous slide. Therefore, it is rather impossible to say how many of the Marysinka linden were planted or how many survived over the centuries. I know of a few of them, for example one located in the town of Dobczyce, not far away from my hometown. It was planted on the sacred land belonging to a local old church. Over the centuries, it was adorned with a small shrine dedicated to the Holy Mother. The tree was heavily damaged during the late stages of World War II, but then restored by the local community. Now it's under protection as a natural monument, still with a shrine on its side. There are dozens, if not hundreds, of significant locations in Poland connected to the linden trees, either by the name or by the legends, or by the presence of an old linden tree appearing in local history. A good example could be the village of Święta Lipka in northern Poland. That name means literally a sacred linden. The place is connected to legends about miracles, and its old basilica is believed to be built above a much older sacred grove of the old Prussians, the extinct Baltic tribe related to the modern-day Lithuanians. Example of a significant so-called family tree could be the Raymond's Linden, located in the village of Praszki in central Poland, on a property that was acquired by the family of Władysław Raymond, a Polish writer who won the Nobel Prize for his novel The Peasants in 1924. He was known to travel to the village for its peaceful atmosphere, perfect for writing. That linden is believed to be around 350 to 400 years old. I've included the names on the slide for you so it's easier to look them up later with the correct spelling in case you want to. The last example that I want to include here is my hometown Myślenice, located to the south from the city of Kraków. There is a peculiar tree in our cold barns, adorned with medieval axe and chopper. Our historians argue what type of a tree should be portrayed there, because the oldest known stamps and historical documents mention an oak tree. However, in the local culture, the linden plays an important role and is mentioned in the oral stories and legends. Moreover, there used to be a certain linden tree growing alone on a hill seen right from the town's main square that was said to be the unofficial symbol of the town. Unfortunately, it was destroyed by a storm a few years ago, but still plays an important role in the consciousness of the locals. According to historical documents, that particular linden was planted only in the 19th century, but possibly on the place of an older tree. Legends mention a story about two foiling brothers clearing a forest from two sides for firewood during a harsh winter. They eventually met by a linden, but were surprised by a snowstorm. They hid in the linden's hollows, what not only saved their lives, but also made them come to terms with each other. When the storm ended, they buried the hatchets of the axes seen on the cold of arms. Linden 
was then a symbol of reconciliation for our town, a bright promise in the rather troubled history of the place. There are numerous Polish legends mentioning the linden and some common tropes about the tree. Linden was undoubtedly a sacred material in the rural stories. Branches or cords made from the linden phloem were mentioned in many stories as a magical weapon able to neutralize or even enslave a devil or a vampire. The phloem was also used to craft shoes by the peasants and in some legends those shoes protected the owner and, if made in a certain way, they could even lead to great treasures. Such linden shoes were appearing in some local versions of the legend about the mystical fern flower that could be found only on one night during the year. It was a common motive in the Polish rural stories for the gods to be wandering on the earth. Many of those stories tell about the Holy Mother that spotted the linden during one of her walks. She then chose that tree to be her home on the earth and that's why the people adorned those trees with sacred shrines. A lot of revelations of the Mother Mary were said to happen on the linden. According to ethnographers, Mother Mary was undoubtedly a figure where many pre-Christian beliefs in the old goddesses syncretized over the centuries. I want to finish the presentation with these words and hope you enjoyed it and learned new facts about the Polish culture and folklore. If you still have some questions, Feel free to visit my blog or send me an email to lamusdworski at gmail.com. You can see the address down on the slide. Thank you a lot for joining me today.